Hello and welcome, my name is Andrew and this is the first tutorial in a new series about integrating Crocoblock tools with AI builders, a hot topic right now especially for agencies looking to speed up their workflow. In this one we're going to build a website frontend with Lovable while the backend data lives in WordPress as a custom content type created with Jet Engine. And on the frontend you will see filterable listings with search, filters and pagination, all generated automatically. Don't forget to hit like, comment and subscribe and let's dive in. So the integration of Crocoblock with Lovable will happen through the REST API. But before we start with the actual integration steps, let me quickly show you where the data for our front end is. I want to make a directory website with product information I sourced from Amazon and the products are sport sunglasses. In WordPress I created a custom content type called sunglasses and it has a bunch of fields. Name and description, both set as text area fields. Price, a number field. Sport and frame shape, both select fields with preset options. Image, a media field stored as media URL, since URL is much easier to send through the REST API than attachments. And finally, a link text field where I add the Amazon product page URL. I've already created multiple CCD items here and filled in their details, so we have real data ready to display on the front end. Now that the data is ready, the next step is to make it available to Lovable. I open the sunglasses CCD settings and enable the toggle register get items item rest API endpoint. That gives me two URLs. One endpoint for the full list of sunglasses and one endpoint for a single item by ID. We'll use these URLs in the prompt for Lovable. The list URL could already be used to display all items on the front end and the single item URL tells the builder where to fetch data for product single pages. And if I click parameters overview, I get a pop-up with all the available parameters for this endpoint. I'll also pass that info into the prompt so the builder knows the exact field names it can work with. But instead of relying only on this basic list endpoint, we'll set up a query builder. That way we get full control over filtering by name, sport, frame shape and price. So let's create a query by going to Jet Engine, Query Builder and clicking Add New. I'll give it a name, sunglasses query and choose custom content type query as the type. Then I enable register REST API endpoint. This generates a new endpoint URL which is important to save because we'll need it in the lovable prompt. Next we add query arguments. These arguments will later become filters on the front end once we connect them to the CCD fields. I'm adding name for text search, from and to for minimum and maximum price, sport and shape for filtering by those select fields. Since sport and shape will connect to select fields, I must input their default values as the list of options I defined earlier when creating the CCD fields. And below we get an example of REST API endpoint URL with these arguments attached. That's another piece of information I'll pass into the prompt so Lovable understands exactly how to use these filters. Also don't forget to select the custom content type to get data from. Now to actually make the query arguments work, I scroll down to the query section and click add new. For each filter I select the correct field, the right compare operator and then add a query argument using query variable macro with the name of the query argument I created earlier. For sport and frame shape I map them to their dedicated CCD fields. I set compare to in the list which works for select filters. In the value I choose query variable and then select the arguments I registered before. The same logic applies to the other filters but with differing operators depending on the type. For search by name I use the compare operator like. That way products will match even if the search text is only part of the product name not an exact match. For the price range filter I add two conditions on the price field. The first connects to the from argument with the greater or equal and the second connects to the to argument with less or equal.
And one important detail, it's a good practice to enable exclude this clause if the value is empty to prevent errors when no filter is selected, a topic explained in more detail in the Jet Engine 3.7 release video. With all of that backend work finished and the details collected, the next step is preparing the prompt for Lovable. Instead of writing a long detailed prompt for Lovable myself, I asked ChatGBD to structure it for me. In my request, I passed in everything I had gathered. The REST API endpoints, the field schema for my CCD, the filter arguments, and some context about the project. I explained that this is a directory website with listings and product single pages called Sport Sunglasses for All. The front end should be built in Lovable and the backend data comes through REST API from WordPress using Jet Engine CCD and Query Builder. I also included details like what information should appear in listings, where the filters should go, that button on both cards and single pages must link to the Amazon URL stored in one of the CCD fields, and that since my images are different proportions, they need to be vertically centered inside square containers. As for the style, I simply asked for a modern look with white cards and let ChatGPT add the typography instructions. I think this approach is much quicker than going straight to Lovable with minimal instructions and then spending time on multiple corrections. So once ChatGPT returned a detailed, well-structured prompt, I went to my Lovable dashboard, passed the whole thing into input field and hit submit. After submitting the prompt, we need to wait a few minutes for Lovable to generate the site. I'll fast forward here. Now we're looking at a functional preview. On the left, Lovable shows a sidebar with the prompt I inserted, a summary of how it understood it, and the list of actions it carried out. At the bottom, there is an input field for further instructions, plus an edit button that lets you select specific areas on the canvas to change. Let's close the sidebar and focus on the side preview. From the first glance, it looks modern and minimalistic, and it follows the requirements I gave. Sidebar filters, three-column grid, a clear content on each card. It even includes a total item count above the listings, a typical directory feature and it's a pure initiative on the lovable side. When I start using filters and notice the select filters are displayed as accordions just like I asked ChatGPT, the listing grid upgrades live. Multiple filters work together in an AND relationship so only items matching all active filters are shown. There's also a clear filters button. This is something that ChatGPT suggested. Clicking a product opens its single page with extra info like frame type, full name and description. The buy now button links straight to the Amazon product page, which means you could use this same setup for affiliate websites. Overall, it looks great even before polishing. There are some nice UX touches like shadow changes and image zoom on hover. The design is responsive too, which was also included in the ChatGPT's prompt. What's missing though is pagination. With many products we need to limit item per page and allow navigation between pages. So let's fix that now. The way pagination needs to be set up for REST API connections will differ depending on how you set up connections with listings. For example, if we were requesting a CCD list and not the query endpoint, we'd have to use the limit and offset parameters native to CCDs. Because we're using a query builder, pagination works via an offset argument and a fixed item per page count. In sunglasses query we already have, under query arguments, add a new argument named offset. This will control which slice of items the API returns. Also put a default zero value, because first page should skip nothing and empty value can behave unpredictably. Scroll to the query section. Set a fixed number. That's how many items will be displayed per page. I'll set it to 6. In the same query section, I connect the offset argument by typing a macro manually into the offset field. There isn't a UI button for this macro, you just type it in. And that's it on the backend setup. 6 items per page and the offset parameter decides which page we're on. Page 1 means offset 0, page 2 means offset 6, page 3 means offset 12 and so on. 
With those facts in hand, the follow-up prompt is really simple. In it, I say that there's an offset parameter to switch between pages and that my backend is set to return 6 items per page. I also mentioned that the total number of items, which Lovable needs to calculate how many pages there are, comes from the jQuery total header in the REST API response. That header is basically metadata that gets sent along with the actual JSON data. After I edit a follow-up prompt, a few moments later, Lovable refreshes the site. And now pagination is in place. The listing shows 6 products per page and navigation controls let me switch back and forth between pages. Lovable added these tools automatically where they are because the AI builder understands what users typically expect from a directory website. So what's next? At this point you already have a fully working demo site. You can continue refining it right inside Lovable, adjusting the design, adding sections or tweaking the layout. Or you can export the project and connect it with your own domain to turn this demo into a real-world site. The real advantage of this workflow is how quickly you can get the front-end interface up and running with the AI builder, while Crocoblock handles the heavy lifting on the back-end, structured content, advanced fields and flexible queries. Together they give you speed plus professional control. And that's it for this tutorial. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, it really helps us keep making these. In the next videos we'll look at more ways to connect Crocoblock with AI builders and push this integration even further. See you there!